Okay, so let's walk through the example. Um, you know, a lot of the R calculations you guys are going to do, I think, are pretty simple stuff, which I, I would tell you, you know, after we do the first one or so, is just do them in your head. You're going to be doing a lot of the same kind of stuff. So put your write it out so we're clear. By the way, when you're doing this, this is not a plus or minus idea. The radius is always, from this calculation, going to be positive. So don't worry about it. Do I have a plus or minus choice, that kind of stuff. Because we're not, we're going to rotate through whatever our theta is and travel out a positive radius. So that's square root of 4 plus 4, square root of 8, 2 root 2. You probably could just do that in your head, but there's the work for it. Tangent of theta, y over x. At this point, basically you're solving like a simple trig equation, right? But the idea is you need to remember what quadrant your original coordinate was in. Negative 2, negative, sorry, negative 2, 2 is a quadrant 2 angle. So when you go to choose your theta, you got to choose that theta based on quadrant 2. Now, we should all know that the angle in quadrant 2 that has a tangent value of negative 1 is going to be 3 pi over 4. So there's my r comma theta polar coordinate. Now, just to kind of show you guys, sort of prove to you that it's in the same location, um, first of all, 2 root 2. When you do 2 root 2, I think I told you guys, I don't know, way back when, that uh, square root 2 and square root 3 are roots you should know the decimal values of. Root 2 is 1.4, so if you double that, 2.8. So basically, I'm going to rotate to the 3 pi over 4 rotation line and travel out what I think is about 2.8. So here's the 3 pi over 4 rotation line, and 1, 2.8. About eight. And what you guys will notice, I got to go a little bit further there, about there. So that point is literally. In the same location, as long as my two axes are scaled the same way. You don't ever need to do these two graphs, but I usually do it the first day just to kind of show you guys that we're doing a conversion, but we're not changing actually location at all, just changing the way the coordinate looks. Okay, let's have you guys try one to kind of on your own for a second. So I'm going to give you a second to kind of start up the work on your own. Try to maybe do the R calculation in your head. Uh, tangent of theta, you could probably even do that in your head, I suppose, but I'm going to write them down and we'll take a look at it. So go ahead and get started with the two. Uh, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to kind of roughly plot the rectangular coordinate about where it would be. Okay, so got my R calculation, 2 root 3, tangent of theta, y over x, and then I'm in quadrant 4, so I've got to make sure I pay attention to that. Based on what I plotted, which you guys, again, don't need to do this, but I think it's probably 11 pi over 6. Now you go to your unit circle and answer that question, solve that trig equation, and that's going to be 11 pi over 6. Remember, coming from originally like a 1 over root 3, which comes from 1 half over the square root of 3 over 2, which comes from a coordinate square root of 3 over 2 and a half, which are all your five or sixes, right? So I'm just kind of recapping that idea. Now, as far as two root three goes, root three is about 1.7, so if I double that, about 3.4. Just to kind of again sort of show you guys, if I was rotating to, to the 11 pi over six rotation line, I went out one, two, three point four, about right there, let's see. Should I get that on the line track there?
pretty much around the money. I didn't do it perfect, but it would be perfect if I was doing that. So. Okay. Again, there's no reason for you guys to draw the graphs. I just have them there to prove in a way like, hey, these things are, again, same location, different axis, different axis system, different coordinate system. Okay. So that's converting the one direction. Of course, we want to convert the other direction, so I'll turn our polar into rectangular. And to do that, we're going to start with a little bit of basic trig. Again, going back to this diagram and saying, you know, what are the cosine and sine ratios, which we've done this before too. Um, X over R, Y over R, right? Then solve those things for X and Y, because what we're trying to do here is say, if I give you an R and I give you a theta, how would I find X and Y? Well, solve the cosine equation for X, so you get R cosine. Solve the Y equation. Solve, excuse me, the sine equation for Y, you get R sine. It should be pretty easy to remember because, you know, like in the past, right, X and cosine correspond and Y and sine correspond. So X is R cosine theta, Y is R sine theta. So those will be my kind of little mini conversions going from polar to rectangular. Okay, we're going to run through another set of coordinate conversions, and then we're going to get into some equations. So now when I do this, um, you know, again, this part I may do a little bit with, but, you know, that's just kind of helped prove you guys, hey, yeah, they're in the same spot. But if I was actually doing this one as a polar coordinate, 5 pi over 3 rotation line, which is here, and then negative 3 puts me out here. Remember, opposite direction. So that coordinate would be sitting right there. Okay. So, again, rotate to 5 pi over 3, negative 3, there's my point. Uh, when I get done, what should happen actually is there should be a point roughly in the same spot. Okay, let's walk through the calculation. So, actually pretty simple. R cosine theta. R sine theta. Cosine of 5 pi over 3 being positive 1 half. Sine of 5 pi over 3 being negative square root of 3 over 2. So my coordinate, 1 and a half and 3 root 3 divided by 2. Well, 3 root 3, 1.7 times 3, 5.1 divided by 2, 2.55 approximately. So if I'm at 1.5 and, and 2.55, and again, let's see how good we did here. Matches right up. Okay. And that should happen. Again, you don't have to draw the graphs, but showing you guys that that's what's going on. So conversion, whether, you know, either way, what, it should end up in the, by the way, you should end up in the same quadrant again. So when you get done, like your, uh, when you plot your, you think about your original coordinate, negative 3, 5 pi over 3 being in quadrant 2, your, your rectangular coordinate should also end up in quadrant 2. That's kind of a good double check. Did you do things right with signs and that kind of stuff? All right. One more like this, then we're going to switch over to doing equations. Now, you guys notice I put in 5 pi over 4. That actually was on purpose because even though I'm given the negative angle, which is fine, but I'm thinking about evaluating, so I'm just going to evaluate with a positive angle. This time I probably won't bother with the graphs. Um, but negative, pi, negative 3 pi over 4, if you rotate negative direction, same spot as positive 5 pi over 4. And that's just a matter of getting you guys going through and doing a little bit of calculation. So cosine of 5 pi over 4 be negative root 2 over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 4 also be negative root 2 over 2. That's a 1, 1 coordinate. Okay. okay. So that's coordinate conversion. Actually, pretty straightforward kind of stuff. The only thing you want to just kind of pay attention to is quadrant. And by the way, if I was checking out uh, my original problem, quadrant-wise, if I was in the right spot, if I did negative 3 pi over 4, which is here, 
And then when in the opposite direction, the bot rate two, bot one point four, so right there. So I do know that I did that right by quadrant. The last thing to do is talk about equation conversion. And equation conversion actually is a sort of a little bit like identity, I guess, in a way. You're not really using like a big set of identities or things, but you're using kind of a little set of conversions. I wouldn't necessarily call them identities, but these formulas are what you're going to use to do equation conversion. And that's really it. I mean, that is the list. So you don't have like this big monster at any sheet. You have those five things to choose from, and usually you're only picking from maybe one or two as you're actually looking at a problem. The idea will be doing some kind of substitution, probably a little bit of algebra built in, but we're just going to go from rectangular to polar and vice versa with equations. Okay, so that's the group of stuff we're going to use. I'll just start talking to you guys through a little bit, start with some basic stuff. Some of these are going to be kind of simple, and I think sometimes it's good to think about um, what that equation, what that graph is, rectangular, like you can visualize it, then it kind of helps you understand you know, how it is what it is polar, and especially after we've done the polar graphing day, this will become kind of a little bit even more clear for you guys. But when I look at this first equation, I mean, I guess the first kind of thing I'm thinking about is probably just divide three by three. Now, if you guys can remember back to your geometry days, that's actually the equation of a circle. x squared plus y squared equals r squared, with the center at zero, zero, and the radius being three. So really, this is a rectangular version of a circle. If I said, hey, the radius is 3 and write me the equation of the circle, that would be it. The polar version of this actually is radius 3. x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So there's my substitution from my list over here, just basically using this. And then the last thing is I can take it down to r. And do I need plus and minus? And actually, you don't really need plus and minus for this one because what this really says, if I interpret it as a polar equation, is any rotation line radius 3. So you rotate to any rotation line, you travel out radius 3, that's going to create a circle. Because imagine kind of doing something like this. So you rotate out to your rotation line, you travel out 3, put a point, travel out 3, put a point. So I wouldn't need the radius to be negative because if I rotate to any of those angles and go negative 3, you're just going to go in the opposite direction and plot the same set of points you're plotting with positive 3. So you can interpret that as circle radius 3 based on any rotation line traveling out the distance of 3. Now y equals x, y equals negative x, if you visualize for a sec, you guys think about what that is as a graph. There's the line y equals negative x. I know that I'm actually on the 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 rotation lines if I was talking about a polar axis, because if I rotate to either one of those two parts of that line, in either, in either the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant. So really, as a rectangular to polar, this is actually theta equals 3 pi over 4 or 7 pi over 4. The interpretation of those is to go to the 3 pi over 4 rotation line, radius, plus and minus anything. And what that would do on a polar axis would be like this. You'd rotate to 3 pi over 4 and you'd go out 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, and so on. And eventually you'd create that line. Now, of course, we've got to have an actual conversion way to get there because the first day you probably aren't going to see all these visual connections. But when I see x and y together in one equation, typically my thought is to go to this one. And so what I'm going to do is just do a little bit of uh, kind of quickly convert this over to a y over x expression. So y over x, then it would be equal to negative 1. Just divide both sides by x. And then what you've got here is a substitution. So now tangent of theta is equal to negative 1. Well, if you ask yourself, where does that happen? Three spots, 3 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4. Our polar equations typically are going to read r equals or theta equals. That's kind of your ultimate goal. 